couldn't see it, it kind of disappeared. And so I, I, she said, you have to have life, some energy, some soul into you. And she was right. So immediately I just started doing my gestures, kind of like a mad woman. But in the end, while it wasn't a perfect gesture, it had so much life and so much energy and so much soul, and that has impacted the rest of my drawing for today. So thank you, Valerie. Appreciate that one. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> That's thrilling. <laughs> That's great. Thank, thank you, Jan. That's uh, I really appreciate you talking about that. Because uh, a couple of people today, I've been talking to them. Um, I, because this is a public institution, I don't always talk, I don't address the group about it, but I will now. Um, Sometimes uh, there are rhythms that I have in my work, and there are times where really before I start to work, I actually pray. Um, there are other words you could use for it, but um, it's basically trying to connect with my heart, you know, connect my thinking and my heart, and get to just a quiet place in myself where I'm feeling, I'm getting to where I feel just that reverence and awe for art and for humanity and living beings and connecting with that so that when I draw, that feeling is so much a part that it's just coming out of me. And sometimes we come into class and, and I'm seeing it a lot today, it may be, I don't know if it's the weather or uh, whatever, but um, a lot of people aren't quite doing what they're capable of doing and I've talked to a, a couple about that. and. You know, if you don't want to um, do what I just talked about, the other thing is to simply, you know, step back, catch yourself when you're just not at your best. <coughs> it's really obvious to you. Stop and collect yourself and reconnect with your purpose. And that's really what I'm talking, what I'm trying to get to is reconnecting with your purpose. And then when you're there and step back into the work, you do carry that. It's an amazing experience and it happens. And that's also what you're talking about. Um, but when I uh, am doing a portrait commission, I'll often just really ask to connect with that, that love that we feel for living beings. Because art's a real spiritual experience. And when you connect with that, then there's going to be life coming back to you. And Mozart said that the key to making great music was love. <coughs> and that's really, we have to play the Beatles right now. Love is all you need. But it really does come through here. All right? Okay, so uh, any anything in particular? No, okay. So, Carla. The eyes, when, when the eye, when the mouth is looking forward, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's a shape, and when it turns, you know, the profile is so different. Right. I try to do the same curve, and it doesn't work. Oh, uh, well, it won't work. Because you're trying to do the same thing that you see when you're looking straight on. So what you always have to look for, what are these shapes and values? It's not like the eye anymore. It's just what are these shapes and values no matter what the head's doing. I'll address that right now. Okay, so look at me. Um, I'm going to work with this black chalk and see what it does. And I'm, let's see if I have an eraser. I do, okay. I'll do a big eye, okay. Okay, so one of the things, like when you're working the eye, you have a couple of things. You have the lash line, and the lash line overlays the iris. This is the iris, the colored part of the eye. The outside corner of the eye is often higher than the inside corner if they're looking straight on. That's something you can look to see if it's happening. Because the lashes project out towards you, they're like an <coughs> awning. They cast a shadow over the top part of the eye. And this, of course, is where so much feeling takes place. Now the lower lid often cut, this is uh, really black here, so it's going to have, the lower lid, oh, I could finish that sentence. This is really dark chalk, so I can't rub it like I can charcoal. 
So the lower lid is actually a ledge that projects out. <coughs> So I'm going to erase a little bit of light into this to show that. And it cuts off often like the bottom 5% of the iris. Now these are things that you look for, they're not always the case. You just look to see these things. And the lashes on the lower lid project out from the nearest edge. The farthest edge from the face, the nearest edge to you. So the lashes really start down here, and if you look at Carla, you can see instead of lashes, really what's going on here is there's a shape about like this under, under her eye. The upper lid, the lashes come in, and they kind of create a bit of a triangle through here. This shape, and the lower lid comes under the upper lid. In other words, the upper lid overlaps the lower lid. It's not as dark. This probably isn't the right, really the right sharp thing to be using for a This is great though, this is black chalk. It's really special. I haven't put the upper, the upper lid on here, which I should have done a long time ago. really drawing this in parts. Mm -hmm. I apologize to you for doing that. Okay, now the eyeball itself terminates about right in here. Corner drops on down. A little bit of a shape of boundary right into there. You'll notice all of this. The upper lid comes on down here. From where I stand, it starts to be obstructed by the nose. All of this is in a little bit darker value range. I didn't even put this in the orbit. Man, I'm really blowing it. Doesn't look very good. Let's see what we can do here. Let me let me redo this. See what happens when you draw in parts. You screw up. Right. You want to continue or make separate? No, go ahead. Continue. continue. All right. So let's go ahead.
So what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me your question again? Yes, how the ice change and freeze. Okay. Well, that's that's how. how. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think I'm drawing very well today either. Some of y'all are really doing quite well. It's not curved, it's not rounded like that. If you look at it carefully, it really kind of comes down this way, and then it, gray, it's, it grays out just a little bit. The same intensity of light, in this case, isn't continuing all the way over to here. And this whole area darkens in here of the eyeball. Not that dark. I think I'm going to quit in a minute. Okay. So the eyeball ends about right in here. You can sometimes you even imagine it going mm -hmm. all the way around. And then the inner corner of the eye drops down. And it has a little bit of light right in there.
she's got a lot of light right here. This black chalk is real, it's wonderful to draw with, but it is, a, it is pretty intense to work with. And the lower lid travels on up to about right there, and then it curves down where we have a little bit of this light right in here. This is a lot lighter than I have. One of the things that's really important when you're working with the eyes, I don't have it right here, is this relationship between the curve on the lash line and the height of the curve in the fold of the upper lid. Did that change it? Yes. Okay. It's really important. It's one of the things. It's one of the things that it'll really help you if you <coughs> look for your shapes. Because what you're doing is you're basically just dropping a plumb line from here and seeing where it strikes. Dropping a plumb line from here, which is the highest point, you see that this is to the left of it. So let me draw this out a little bit. I'm not going to use this chalk. I'm going to, again, for this. This is really hard to work with. I'm trying to lighten this value just a little bit. It's very effective. It's effective? beautiful. Oh, it shows up. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's haunting. Well, one time I was at the Met, and they had a beautiful show of um, Leonardo da Vinci's drawings, and they were all in black chalk. So it's I so got beautiful. In this pursuit of finding black chalk. And it's not, you know, art supplies today are not what they were back then. It was really hard to find. But I found it. This light that we see right in here <coughs> is actually a part of the eyeball. That little bit of light under there. This edge up in here marks the eyeball. The lid folds back and around it. Squint your eyes and you can just feel it coming out. Oh yeah, it looks better back here. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I had to point that out. Now the brow needs to be higher. Again, when you're working. So if this is here, <coughs> then that brow that brow comes over, like if this is the corner of the eye, if I drop a plumb line from the edge of the brow, that plumb line would drop about this far from the corner of the eye. That's how I find things. And the bottom part of the brow is higher than the crease in the lid, so it's going to be about right here. And I'm actually looking at the value, uh, not just the hair, because she plucks her eyebrows. I'm looking at the value created by the form. And I'm going to go to the highest point on the brow before it turns. And what do you think I'm going to do? Straight, where it is on the eye. All right. And say it this way. I'm going to drop a plumb line and see where that lands. Mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, some, like, sometimes I, or when, one year I was working on this giant charcoal portrait of this little girl with life size. And she had her hands folded mm -hmm. as she was looking. And I could never, I, I had to figure out where these hands were you know, in relation to her head and then in terms of height, like proximity to the head. And I learned with that to say to myself, because by the time I'd measure it or, you know, get the relationship and come back and try to draw it, I'd forget what I'd just figured out. So I'd say it out loud to myself explicitly. Like the cross in the, in the index finger <coughs> is directly under the, the right wing of the nose. And then, I, and then when I would do it that explicitly for myself, I'd get it placed. And that's why, you know, I talk to you all about really saying exactly what you're seeing, exactly what you're doing. So here we go to the high point on the brow. If I drop a line down from there, and I'll just slow down and do it the way I want you to do it. If I drop a line down from there, it almost cuts through the pupil. It's a little bit on the left side of the pupil. So I come back to my pupil, throw a plumb line up, and I've got it almost in the right place. 
See, when I throw that plumb line up, I don't throw a really hard line, which y'all need to be careful about, some of you. I, you know, I just throw the line I need, and I draw it on here. If I don't draw it, what I see people do is they'll start it in the right place, and then they'll move it so that the lines they already have are right. <laughs> it doesn't help them. <laughs> delightful to watch over and over. Okay, so that turn is, is here. It's an old technique. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that tells us where that is. And the hairline's going to get up here. Now, you, we've got a little bit of reflected light in here, and it was an accident, and I like it. It mm -hmm, looks nice. You've got a little bit of light in here. Now, if we were working more with this, what we would see, like if, if I were doing an actual portrait of her, we'd see some darts of light. The outside of rim of her iris has a darkened line on it. That's often the case, not always the case. If you're painting it, people will tend to paint it black, but it's actually kind of a rich brown. Now that I've made that stronger, I really I need to choose whether to make this stronger or dull this. And because this is pure paper back here, my eraser's kind of used up. I'm going to dull this a little bit. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. I do. I'm painting dog portraits for the rescue group. So I'm really doing the dog's eyes now, two labs. It's really hard because you have to see those little spokes of light in the pupil. I had to really study the mm -hmm. photograph to do it and the line around. And it looks like one big brown blob when you look at the eye, but when you get in there, you, you have to create it yourself. Exactly. Do you think we could do the same kind of a study by moving the artist table over and all move our easels this way to face we her? We could, mm -hmm. but you can also do it when she's facing. I mean, we could. It's just it's a little difficult with large boards and this many kind of people. The best thing would be for you to just get a, uh, you could photograph somebody's eye or set up a mirror and study your own eye. Because you'll never get close enough in class to really do it. Here. So let me just show it to you in profile. Okay, so Carla just turned on. Wait one sec. Move over the other way, please. You get really bossy right I said please. When you say please, it's not bossy. <laughs> no, you're, you're getting bossy with me. 